What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. Today, we've got another live fantasy football mock draft back on Yahoo with a 12-team half-point PPR mock where we will be selecting from the last overall pick. So that's right, 12th overall. And as you can see, we've got the setup ready to go. This thing will be kicking off in a little bit. And while we wait for that to happen, a quick reminder, if you enjoy, hit that like button, subscribe, let us hear it in the comment section, what you think of the roster along with any other questions you guys might have. This is the perfect place to ask them. And lastly, check us out online at alldaypigskin.com. And while you're there, get yourself a copy of the 2021 ADP Fantasy Football Draft Guide. Everything you could want at a great value. Details in the description. But with that being said, let's get into this draft because the first two picks are already finalized, as you would expect. Christian McCaffrey followed by Dalvin Cook. So right now, I would anticipate probably a combination of Derrick Henry followed by Alvin Kamara, followed by maybe either Taylor or Ezekiel Elliott. So right now, for the most part, this is pretty much chalk, if you will. I'm curious to see at this point in time how far Saquon Barkley potentially falls. Obviously, you see the pup designation right now uh, next to his name. And for what everyone wants to say about Saquon Barkley, yes, the guy is an elite running back, but he's still coming off a major injury. So let's keep all those things in mind. And, you know, for that reason, his status is one that absolutely has to be tracked, uh, you know, as we get closer to uh, the end of August and early September when so many drafts really swing into full uh, motion. But after, again, just showing you guys a quick breakdown of this draft board, There was a huge run on running backs uh, with Christian McCaffrey, Dalvin Cook, Derrick Henry, Alvin Kamara, Jonathan Taylor, and Nick Chubb. So nothing too crazy there. I would say Nick Chubb going that early ahead of Ezekiel Elliott and Saquon Barkley is a little bit interesting. Uh, And then a huge run on wide receivers with, or pass catchers, I should say, Travis Kelsey, Tyreek Hill, Devontae Adams, Stephon Diggs. But that allows us to go with, you know, everything I said about Saquon Barkley is true, but Also, there's something to be said about value and getting Saquon Barkley at the end of the first round. To me, that's value and value that I think, you know, in terms of risk versus reward, the reward is a little bit higher. And now, you know, the name of the game is to pair him up since you have somebody that's a little bit riskier with a Saquon Barkley. I would now, you know, pair him up with a running back that I think in my eyes is extremely, extremely safe. And I've always said this, but to me, that is Austin Eckler. So here, I'm not really thinking too much. Saquon Barkley and Austin Eckler, great, great value. I could have gone, you know, a wide receiver, even though the top three wide receivers are gone with Diggs, with uh, Devontae Adams and Tyreek Hill. But Aaron Jones was also a name that I was considering. The fact that this guy right before me got Ezekiel Elliott and Aaron Jones, great, great combination from him as well. Preferably, I would have hoped to have gotten Ezekiel Elliott than Saquon Barkley, just because, again, you know, Ezekiel Elliott doesn't have right now as many question marks as a Saquon Barkley, uh, like I previously alluded to. So it'll be interesting to see. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, Saquon Barkley is going to bust or something like that. I'm just saying that you need to realize the risk with him. So uh, here we'll even read the quick uh, the quick, quick synopsis on him. Basically, Giants are going to take the long-term approach with Saquon Barkley. Um, so there's a chance that Barkley is ready for week one, uh, which at the same time potentially alludes to him obviously not being ready uh, for week one. So as a result, his ADP will drop as you see here. Now, For what it's worth, again, when we get closer and closer to August to September, if those question marks are still there, then it becomes a different conversation because, you know, at that point in time, if there's still this, you know, sort of uncertainty um, around such a big time top tier player, then it becomes a situation where, okay, there might be more to this and all those concerns might actually be a little bit more valid. And at that time, it'd be tougher for me to select him because, you know, the gap in between the time the season starts and the gap between us learning more concrete information isn't as, you know, 
uh, doesn't have as big of a buffer as we do right now. So it's it's a little bit of a tougher situation. But let's take a look at these selections after Aaron Jones. You see Clyde edwards alaire his ADP skyrockets. Najee Harris, uh, again, in the first part of the second round. Then DK Metcalf, Darren Waller, a round later than Travis Kelsey. Oh, by Josh Jacobs and Antonio Gibson. I don't understand the Josh Jacobs selection ahead of Antonio Gibson, ahead of, you know, even Joe Mixon, uh, ahead of uh, Chris Carson, just to name a few uh, players, then a run on wide receivers, which usually happens towards the end of the second round. DeAndre Hopkins, AJ Brown, Calvin Ridley. I love, love, love the value on Calvin Ridley the end of the second round, pair him up with Dalvin Cook. That is an elite combination. I love that start for that individual. So right now, I would imagine you start to see the guys like, yeah, guys like Keenan Allen, Joe Joe Mixon being there in the third round, pretty insane. But right now, what I'm hoping for is we can get a, you know, difference-making wide receiver, maybe an Allen Robinson that falls to us. But again, I doubt that that would be the case. Um, if that happens, I'd be very happy. I've got two running backs that, again, the name of the game here, to some extent, is also luck. You know, you could draft the perfect squad, but if you get unlucky with injuries, then, you know, there's only so much you could do. And with that being the case, if, again, if Barkley and Eckler stay healthy for the majority of the 2021 season, and Barkley doesn't have a setback, and he actually is back for week one, then we're rocking. We're rocking at the running back position. And you could argue we have the top two running backs out of this entire draft because, you know, you look at it, you've got Christian McCaffrey, David Montgomery, not bad. Dalvin Cook, Joe Mixon again, not bad. But I think right now, probably Barkley and Eckler alongside with Ezekiel Elliott and Aaron Jones are the two of the top combinations. And I feel pretty good about that. And the way this thing is shaping up, there's a potential chance that we could get a difference-making wide receiver. You know, you saw Keenan Allen to kick off the third round, followed by a run on running backs, Joe Mixon. uh, And at that point, it was just huge value. J.K. Dobbins, Miles Sanders, Justin Jefferson, good value, almost in the middle of the third round. Kyler Murray, the first quarterback off the board ahead of Patrick Mahomes, which I'll be honest with you guys, I don't necessarily mind. I've got Kyler Murray as my second overall quarterback this year, but it's not by much. So, um, him, Patrick Mahomes, you have the rushing upside for Kyler Murray. So I understand why somebody would have him ranked higher. And then you have CD Lamb afterwards. It Lamb is getting a boost in ADP similar to, you know, kind of a reverse situation of Saquon Barkley because Amari Cooper has been placed on the pup list. Now, all of a sudden, you know, CD Lamb's ADP is kind of going up. And speaking of, um, you know, potential wide receivers, we should take our attention to the draft draft board because uh, we're on the clock. And somehow I think we got extremely, extremely lucky because Allen Robinson is still here. I'm drafting him and I'm not really even thinking about it. When I had previously mentioned that I'm hoping he's, he's there, I was kind of, you know, probably reaching in straws, but right now it's a reality. And I think that is sensational, sensational value. There's, there's been some really, really great value picks so far in this draft. And I'll quickly go into them in a little bit, but let's make our second selection here. It's going to be a wide receiver again, and I'm just going to go Robert Woods, Um, you know, him, Cooper Cup. To me, it doesn't really matter who you have higher. I love both of them. Uh, Julio Jones is somebody that I was also considering. So, uh, you know, maybe going with one of those three guys, just as long as we get our second wide receiver. If it wasn't Allen Robinson, I probably would have gotten Robert Woods, Julio Jones, but I'm really happy with the way our probably, you know, last three picks shaped up. Austin Eckler at the end of the first round at the turn, to me, that's sensational value. The only thing, you know, you could potentially have quips with is that Saquon Barkley selection, which I absolutely understand. If you wanted to play it safer, I probably would have gone Aaron Jones and then Austin Eckler. But, you know, I am sometimes a sucker for that high, high upside and for that value. So, uh, again, kind of giving you guys my logic there. Uh, But again, showing you some of these other selections and probably some of the reasons why somebody like an Allen Robinson fell to us, I would say first and foremost, maybe, you know, somebody being a little bit more bullish on CD Lamb, Josh Jacobs going in the second round. I think that was a huge, huge reach. Um, Kyler Murray, you know, even though 
a qu- technically a quarterback other than Kyler Murray still hasn't been drafted. So you could call Kyler Murray. Well, there, and as soon as we say that, you see Patrick Mahomes go. So there's one or two picks here and there uh, that are the reason why Allen Robinson fell to us. David Montgomery at the end of the second round, I think that's also, uh, all things considered, a reach when you look at Joe Mixon, when you look at Chris Carson. There are considera- uh, there are concerns in Chicago with David Montgomery. I, I continue to say this. Yes, the guy was sensational last season uh, at the end of the season versus a cake schedule and with no Tariq Cohen and, you know, with Matt Nagy not calling the plays, but all those things are literally going to be the opposite this year. So he's not going to duplicate, like I I will stake anything. He's not going to duplicate the success he had last season, this season. Yes, he could outplay his ADP, no question about it, but he's not going to be a top five running back again. So for that reason, you know, obviously it's the end of the second round. So nobody really is going to be considered a top five running back at that point in time. But I think you could argue he's not even going to be a top 10 running back. That's just me. So I, here and there, I would say there's about three, four players that have kind of been reaches that we've touched on why uh, Allen Robinson fall, fell to us. Then Robert Woods, again, I think that was just pretty much just a no-brainer. Uh, after that, you see Chris Godwin, Julio Jones. So good value in Julio Jones, I continue to say that. Daryl Henderson in the fourth round. Again, that's probably, I think, going to be average out to his ADP. It'll be early to middle fourth round for a team that's kind of ignored the running back position. If you've ignored the running back position, you might be tempted to take him a little bit earlier. If you, you know, if you haven't, his ADP might drop a little bit, but you see uh, Patrick Mahomes afterwards, James Robinson, way, way, way too big of a reach on James Robinson at that point. Uh, You know, even though I guess that's what happens when you go double tight ends, Travis Kelsey and Darren Waller. I don't know why in the hell you would do that. And then go CD lamb, another pass catcher, uh, that's a strategy that uh, is going to blow up in your face, frankly put. Uh, then you have Mike Evans, Brendan Ayuk, Josh Allen, DJ Moore, Amari Cooper, Kyle Pitts. So unfortunately, we're not going to get our pick at the tight end position because both Kyle Pitts and TJ Hawkinson have been selected. Kyle Pitts with the last pick in the fourth round, TJ Hawkinson with the second in the fifth. Javonta Williams goes off the board before that. Again, I'm not sure why Javonta Williams is going off the board before somebody like a Mike Davis, before somebody like a Miles Gaskin makes zero sense to me. But again, maybe I'm in the minority. After that, a little bit of a run on quarterbacks, Lamar Jackson, Dak Prescott. Uh, In between there, Adam Thielen, Deontay Johnson, Mike Davis. So again, there's some really good value picks right now. Cooper Cup is still on the board. Miles Gaskin is still on the board. And right now, as much as I would have loved to have gotten a... Lamar Jackson, as much as I would have loved to have gotten a TJ Hawkinson, I really like the value picks that we got again uh, at wide receiver in the third and fourth round. And I'll continue to say this with those situations and you selecting last overall, you're not going to be, usually you're not going to be able to get as good value and you're going to have to reach on certain players. I, if I wanted TJ Hawkinson, I would have had to reach on him at the start of the fourth round, you know. If you believe in the guy, there's nothing wrong with that. But I also knew that just getting another wide receiver is probably a little bit more important. And right now, I'm going to, speaking of wide receiver, I'm going to get another one that I think great value. He falls to us, Tyler Lockett. Yes, he can be a little bit boom or bust. But overall, I think where we're getting him is pretty good value. So we get Tyler Lockett there. Let's see if there's anything here at the uh, running or at the quarterback position that's great, not really at the wide receiver position, we've already kind of loaded up on there. So I'm just going to go to running backs. I'm going to go with a guy in Damian Harris that I think is pretty good value. You know, at tight end, you know, you could argue we could have gone somebody like a Mark Andrews. I'm not the biggest Mark Andrews believer, to be honest with you guys. I think the lack of targets always has been an issue this year with more weapons than ever surrounding Lamar Jackson, I think that naturally means Mark Andrews is going to see potentially even less targets. And in any type of PPR scoring, I think that's a little bit of a downgrade. So that's just how I kind of view that situation. Damian Harris, again, you could argue uh, probably our biggest reach up until this point. Um, But I knew that quarterback, the quarterback position would have pretty good value later on. And Damian Harris is kind of quickly becoming a guy that 
I think is slowly going up draft boards. I could have also considered Kareem Hunt, definitely, but I wanted to get some value at as a starting running back. So, you know, it was between Kareem Hunt and Damian Harris. Other than that, other running backs that I would have considered potentially Ronald Jones a little bit later, potentially Raheem Mostert a little bit later. I wasn't as, you know, tempted to go wide receiver just because, again, we just got Tyler Lockett. We got Robinson Woods before that. And I do think there's probably a little bit of a drop off in, 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 you know, expectations here. T Higgins was probably the other wide receiver that I, that I would have mentioned. Antonio Brown is someone that I anticipate we can get later on. Michael Thomas is a potential stash. You see that is also something that's very, very interesting to me. Again, quickly looking at these draft results after a Damian Harris selection, you see Mark Andrews, you see Trey Sermon, Claypool, Kareem Hunt. I'd be taking Kareem Hunt ahead of Trey Sermon. I'd be taking probably, you know, Damian Harris ahead of Trey Sermon. Uh, then Justin Herbert goes in that sixth round. I could have gone probably Justin Herbert to pair him up with Austin Eckler to get that stack. But, you know, again, at the quarterback position, when you've reached this point, I'm all right just waiting a little bit longer and getting somebody like a Matthew Stafford, which I think is going to be, you know, a reality we'll see in the seventh round. Maybe maybe I'll be kicking myself. Uh, maybe I'll, you know, uh, the gamble will pay off. Uh, but after Justin Herbert, you see T. Higgins, again, very good value. Kenny Galladay followed by Chase Edmonds. And right now, just kind of looking at how this thing might shape up, let's quickly look at our overall player board. You know, there's some good value at you know, wide receiver with guys like Jamar Chase, guys like Cortland Sutton, Juju Smith-Schuster, Dallas Goddard is still on the board, J Jalen Hurts is still on the board. I doubt I'm going to be able to get both Dallas Goddard and Jalen Hurts, how I might not even be able to get both of them. But if I can get that and kind of get that little stack going at the, you know, uh, at that point in this draft, then I wouldn't be too upset about it. Yes, Dallas, Goddard, Dallas Goddard's value isn't as high as it would be if Zach Ertz leaves. And it seems like Zach Ertz isn't leaving, but Dallas Goddard is still the number one tight end on that team, in my opinion. So yes, you know, his top five upside at the tight end position is kind of erased as long as Ertz is there. But I think he's still going to be, you know, somebody that I prefer over, you know, looking at the other tight ends, just throwing out a few names. I prefer him over Tyler Higby, over Noah Fant over uh, Logan Thomas, over Robert Tunyon, over Gesicki, over Irv Smith. So just to use that as an example, uh, that's probably where I would be heading at with Dallas Goddard next at that tight end position. We'll see if we're lucky enough to land him. Uh, again, let's go back to the draft results. After that Chase Edmonds pick, you see Michael Carter, Russell Wilson. So a little bit of a run on quarterbacks, Jamar Chase there, and then Tom Brady, followed by Odell Beckham. So right now, the way I look at it, Every team other than the two picking before me have a starting quarterback. So we might get sniped a little bit at that position. I'm kind of see, uh, curious to see how these, uh, excuse me, quarterback rankings are shaping up. So Jalen Hurts is ahead of Matthew Stafford. So is Ryan Tannehill. So I think there's a pretty safe chance we get Matthew Stafford or Joe Burrow or Jalen Hurts on our team, which I'm pretty happy about. And then again, if Dallas Goddard is still there, he will be one of our other selections. But you see Tyler Higby just go. So I, I would anticipate Dallas Goddard is actually selected here because there's some auto picks and there's teams that still haven't drafted a tight end, which means, you know, Dallas Goddard will be an auto pick. And there you go. As soon as I say that, you see Dallas Goddard off the board in the seventh round. It's all right. We'll be able to address the quarterback position and then we can wait even later for a tight end. Uh, it, I oftentimes, once we get past this Dallas Goddard range, I oftentimes, you know, have to do that. So again, if we had wanted to get a tight end, we'd have to have done that in the fourth round. And I'm not saying that's necessarily wrong. You know, in hindsight, if you told me that we could get TJ Hawkinson instead of Robert Woods and then still get Tyler Lockett, uh, yeah, I would have, I would have done that swap because we get an upgrade at the tight end position, which a big time upgrade in my opinion too, which is a lot more scarce than a wide receiver. But, you know, who would have predicted that Tyler Lockett would have fell to the end of the fifth round? I think that's just sensational value. And I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to second guess it. So I'm happy we got Tyler Lockett. We got Robert Woods before that. So it's okay. 
After that Dallas Goddard selection, you see Raheem Mostert, you see Leonard Fournette. So I believe that Ronald Jones is still available, which is, again, I think very, very good value. Leonard Fournette should, be, should not be going ahead of Ronald Jones in any format. I know a fan just goes. So I anticipate potentially some quarterbacks to go here with the next three picks. Um, and there goes Robert Tunyon. There goes Ryan Tannehill. So our prediction of at least one quarterback going off the board was accurate. And right now, that means we're going to have either our choice of Joe Burrow or Matthew Stafford. Uh, I, I guess Jalen Hurts could have been a part of that conversation. Uh, right now, though, let's go get our quarterback, finally. We can go get Matthew Stafford. We can go get Joe Burrow. I'll go with the stack. I've got Robert Woods. I'll add Matthew Stafford. So there we go. And now at the tight end position, I'm not too excited about what's going on here. I guess we could go Logan Thomas. You know, he did just get paid. So how big of a, you know, how how much is he going to be involved in that offense? Maybe more than some people anticipate, despite all that talent being added. So that's something to consider. Ronald Jones is also still there. And I'll just, I'll, you know, what? I'll just, I'll just grab my tight end. I'll go with somebody that's quote unquote safer than some of those other options. We'll see if that's actually the case or not. Ronald Jones was another option, definitely. I'm not denying that. We had gotten Damian Harris as a bench piece, so I wasn't necessarily as tempted to go with Ronald Jones. Somebody like a Antonio Brown, also very, very tempting, but I think there's a good chance that Antonio Brown falls to us in the ninth round. Probably not Ronald Jones, uh, I will say that, but getting Antonio Brown at that point in time will be all right. So we got Matthew Stafford. We got um, Logan Thomas as our quarterback tight end combination. Again, it could be better. It can always be better for the most part. But, you know, I'll say this, at least our starting running backs aren't James Robinson and Mike Davis. That's all I'm going to say about that. And at least our second wide receiver isn't DJ Shark. Because like I said, sometimes you can get a little bit cute with some positions and just go a little bit crazy. And again, I think this is a reason why you know, maybe there was an earlier run on tight ends and some people got nervous. The guy, the fact that this guy got two tight ends is a little bit crazy. Again, I don't recommend that. Uh, but I think overall, we've got a balanced team. You know, we don't have any, you know, glaring, glaring weaknesses. You could argue the tight end position, but I mean, hell, after Travis Kelsey, Darren Waller, George Kittle, Kyle Pitts, and Hawkinson. So after those five tight ends are off the board, I think you could argue that everybody has a tight end weakness. I don't agree about Mark Andrews. Uh, I don't view him the way a lot of other people view him. I think he's a better tight end, much better tight end at that in standard scoring leagues. I could have gotten Mark Andrews in the sixth round instead of Damian Harris, definitely. But again, I took a little bit more value in a potential breakout running back in Damian Harris. So that was the logic there. And also going running back there with Saquon Barkley being a little bit of a question mark is something that I did take into consideration right now the way this is shaping up again a lot of auto picks so we're going to play this out until the ninth and 10th round and we're going to wrap this thing up but I like our group at wide receiver I think we got sensational value and Allen Robinson Saquon Barkley at the end of the first round look I'll just say it this way this is my last comment about Saquon Barkley yes he's a risk but if Saquon Barkley uh you know he suits up in week one Barkley becomes potentially the biggest steal of this entire draft. I'll say at least of the first round, no doubt about it, because Barkley, even at like 80, 90% is going to be a pretty damn good running back. And he's, you know, his workload is only going to get increased as the season progresses. So that's, again, the logic there. Here, looking at the eighth round, just to point out some value picks, a lot of people have gone on, you know, on auto picks. So you're going to see a lot of kickers, a lot of defenses. So Nothing too crazy to mention here. Melvin Gordon towards the end of the eighth round. That's pretty good value. I will say that. Michael Thomas goes off the board. Unfortunately, we are not able to snag Michael Thomas at the end of the ninth round. I had kind of alluded to it as a guy that could be a sleeper on your team that you get towards the ninth, tenth round. Also, we could have considered him in the eighth round. But again, I wanted to be a little bit more principled and get a tight end and then, you know, potentially get Michael Thomas in the ninth round. But I will say Michael Thomas probably has seen his biggest drop in ADP here on Yahoo, or at least uh, their player rankings are the most recently updated. Also, 
you know, Brennan Cooks, he should be higher. Deshaun Watson trending like he's going to play. I could very well draft Deshaun Watson right now and be in a situation where, I mean, I have arguably a top five quarterback in like the 10th round, which just doesn't happen. So I always try and bring attention to that with Deshaun Watson. Yes, he's got his off the field uh, situation, but, you know, for better or for worse, it seems like he's trending towards playing. So, you know, as a fantasy football player, you take that into consideration. And if he plays for you, then, you know, uh, consider drafting him and, you know, consider him a steal at this point in time. Just that's, you know, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. And right now we've got, like I said, two more or one more pick until our selection. It's our turn to make a pick. So let's go ahead and get Antonio Brown like I always love to do at this point in time. So we're going to get Antonio Brown. That's one of our picks. Let's see if there's anything great left at running back right now. Nothing that I necessarily love, you know, so probably I might just go back to the running back situ or to the wide receiver, excuse me, situation again. I think Brennan Cooks becomes a pretty good value if Deshaun Watson plays. I think Deshaun Watson himself also. Cortland Sutton still kind of maybe potentially dealing uh, with after effects from his injury. So I'll just go Brennan Cooks at this point in time and we'll wrap this thing up. Overall, again, our roster, just so you guys can see it, is Matthew Stafford, Allen Robinson, Robert Woods, Saquon Barkley, Austin Eckler, Logan Thomas, Tyler Lockett, and then on our bench, Damian Harris, Antonio Brown, Brendan Cooks. Again, overall, I'd probably give this, you know, I think it's a solid team. I think there's no major weaknesses, especially at the most important positions, wide receiver and running back. So I'll go B minus, uh, you know, potentially maybe you could argue C plus because of the tight end situation. But I like the depth that we got at running back and at wide receiver. And again, if Saquon Barkley actually does shoot up in week one, I know I'm saying actually I'm saying if a lot here, but assuming that happens, then this team gets a boost in the draft grade by a decent amount. And I would say, you know, this goes from like a C plus B minus to potentially a B B plus type of situation. I'm not worried about the quarterback situation. Like I said, I could have gone to Sean Watson as well. But overall, hey, let me know what you think in the comment section along with any questions you guys might have. I will do my best to answer them. If you enjoyed, hit that like button, subscribe. And again, uh, check us out online at alldaypigskin.com. And while you're there, get yourself a copy of the 2021 ADP Fantasy Football Draft Guide. Great value. Uh, everything you could want. Details in the description. But in the meantime, we'll see you guys in future videos.